Look at that. Oh, there, we're under the road jam. We're under it. Oh, look at that. Look how sweet that looks. That looks freaking amazing. Looking at this uh, break here, I'd say that's pretty good. Like, I need water for my traps to work. Welcome to another installment. I don't know, that's not how I start my videos. Maybe I'll start off by introducing today's sponsor, Jackery. We got the Jackery Explorer 3000 Pro. I'll do a little bit more on that later. But uh, we got a problem here, and so we gotta get going straight away. We're gonna get to that. We're also gonna check out the trout pond. I know you guys have been itching for some updates on that. But we may get the fish in, we may not. It really all depends on logistics. Uh, but first order business. Well, as you guys can see, the ice is off the pond. Came in and do an update a while ago to make sure that the windmill was functioning. When the wind's blowing, it works really good. That's by Condors. There's some links down below if you guys want to check that out. There's no more ice on it, finally. Been waiting for this day for a long time. I got to gather my trap supplies and we're going to head back to the creek because that's where all the action's happening. Some of my trap supplies here set out. We've got a Connie bear down below. We've got the axe. We got the saw, we got the trap setting tool, all necessary. We got some scents, some beaver caster scents, um, some toilet paper. You never know when that might come in handy. And then we got some wire cutters and some snippers. And then down below here is the standard 330 trap, Connie Bear trap. So this we're gonna set. Uh, I've got a couple more I'll dig up as well. Uh, set uh, maybe two maybe three it depends we've got to track down where exactly this beaver's been hanging out I have a bead on a couple locations Kevin's been keeping me updated um, So we'll just set it where is best. All right guys. Let's head over to the creek curious it looks like that beaver just swims underneath all these obstructions here even the grass but uh I look at here and it's like oh, it's not coming through here because it's all matted on the top beavers like to swim on the top but it actually just looks like the beaver goes completely underneath this grassy stuff here and then of course it's hard for me to see what what's going on underneath the surface there but you guys get the idea so go do a little bit more a little bit more exploring. We'll see if there's a better spot to set up. You see the animals here, it's kind of funny. They, uh, they don't like to get their feet wet either, so something's been making use of my boardwalk here to get across and pooped it all over it. Not too many people realize just how destructive beavers can be. Well, about to show you a really good example of just what they're capable of doing here. These ones, they've only just, it's girdled the tree, so it's pretty much killed the tree. It's killed the tree here. Here's a smaller one, so it might actually eat some of the tips of the branches on that one. The good thing about this is it's opened up the canopy here, and this apple tree might actually thrive this year. This tree's all cut off as well. Anything in the water, they've cut off. So yeah, he's coming up here for sure. Well, he might be able to make a trail in here. Cut this off, we can block this area here. The beaver might come through there. It looks like there's another channel. But if he comes through here, he might exit through that way if we block this area up enough. So we're gonna check the trail camera here to see what kind of activity we have. Make sure the beaver's still around. And the next order of business is to find a place that would be convenient to trap them. All this is all flooded out. Um, I could maybe draw the beaver back in through a trap if I put some scent out. But I don't really wanna to be too, too far from where the beaver's traveling normally. It might go down a little bit lower. It was doing some repairs down at the lower section. Actually, I got some really good trail camera footage I'll show you right now of the beaver working on that section, filling it in. And it looks like he's been doing some repairs. So that might be a good spot to trap as well. The only issue is it's far from the dam and the lodge, which I know is up higher, uh, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. What's gonna happen is if I trap far enough away from the lodge, I'll end up trapping the adult beavers, the male, 
will typically be the one that goes off further from the lodge to do work, maintenance, keep the areas flooded so that they can have food and protection from the water. So we'll figure out where we're gonna do, get that set up, and hopefully we'll be able to turn it into some fur and some food. Here's a look at that beaver claster gland here. So that's from a, a foreign beaver. It's just a little scent that's put on the end of the stick there. And then a beaver will come in from a long, long way away to come figure out what kind of beaver is intruding on their territory. So give it a quick, quick sniff. So it's not as strong anymore, but it's still there. So uh, we'll take that with us and make use of it instead of wasting it. This stuff is pricey when you buy it. Uh, you can't make it yourself, but you got to chop a beaver from a foreign environment first and, uh, you know, grind it up and add, I think it's glycerin and, and then you're good to go. So this is kind of neat here. This is a deer, deer rub or deer scrape just on the trail here. Coming through the creek and then making a rub on the tree. I swear beavers have a whole bunch of ADHD <laughs> or maybe it's just ADD or maybe it's just efficiency <laughs> because oftentimes what they do here is they'll cut a tree like this one here so it's cut but it's hung up also so they can't actually drop a lot of the trees to the ground where they can make use of it so they just cut them and then they hope if they do enough do it enough times one will land and they can eat the tops they don't like they don't like eat just the bark at the bottom here there's not much nutrients in that that's why they spit it all out they may be just efficient and so what they're doing is they're cutting or wringing a whole bunch of trees and then they're gonna let the wind blow the rest of rest of it down and then they go work on the next one well some of you guys might know what those tracks are the distinction is that the big middle toe is big it's the big toe it's bigger than the other toes that means it's a turkey Well, I'm not really sure what would possess a beaver to buck logs, but it sure has made some firewood out of these two trees. <laughs> chunks of, chunks of wood. <laughs> it's funny because there's another chunk over here. So I have no idea. I've never seen a beaver do that. Just wanted to eat chunks, so it just bucked it up. Maybe it's getting ready for winter. It's going to have a nice bunch of wood to uh, stick in the fire. <laughs> Makes no sense to me. Well, we could do a dam break set because it actually looks like the beaver's been back here. He plugged this up a couple of days ago because I, uh, I was here looking. And it looks like he's been kind of going swimming through here or some animals have been going through here. Doesn't seem to be too concerned with this dam break over here. But he is swimming up here. You want to kind of do your best to find a place that will work without too much effort. I will set another trap higher up because from the trail camera, this is a pretty big beaver. It's a, it's a massive beaver and that's not a big distance for the beaver to travel through here. But I think if we clean this area here out, we can make a spot where the beaver will just want to swim through. If we get rid of this grass, it should be good.
Oh, well then. <laughs> I had to go all the way around the other side. Well, that stick wasn't too kind to me. <laughs> that water's deep, man. I, uh, I was pushing on the stick and the, it was a dead stick and the dead stick broke. So, <laughs> I'm a little bit wet and a little bit cold. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure anybody who's trapped has all kinds of trapping tails. I haven't got my finger caught in the trap yet, so that's that's one thing. Well, I did kind of, but uh, just barely. Not not 3:30. <laughs> that stick gave me no warning. <laughs> oh, both boots full to the brim. Oh, incidentally, if you guys are looking for some boots, high C boots. They gave me these to try out. I built the pond with it. They're waterproof just not when it goes over top of the boot <laughs> I don't I don't have too many bloopers somebody asked me you should do a blooper video like Greg I honestly I don't have that many bloopers normally <laughs> pretty careful <laughs> oh anyway I think that traps mostly set I still got to pull it up and take the safety off of it because the safety's still on I was gonna planning on going to the other side with some wood to kind of block it off a little bit more I uh, see I just took the shortcut I was gonna go around the other way anyway I'll show you give you a look bit of a caster mound here just load up some mud up top here and then we'll get the we'll get some caster sent out put a little bit on top of there and we'll stick it in the mound and uh, that'll draw in beavers from a pretty long distance away I don't know if you guys can see in there or not. You might be able to see. But the trap's obviously at the top here. And I've got uh, it through the loops and then submerged. And the trick here is I gotta make sure that the beaver doesn't go underneath the trap. Because the beaver likes to swim like on the bottom of the river or, or, or float on the top. So what I'm hoping is that he'll kinda just go below this. I've never had any good luck with, with traps that are set just below the surface like this. With, you know, you put a dive stick, but then they go all the way down to the bottom. So 
I don't quite understand the philosophy behind that. So this one's going to be not quite on the bottom. I'm going to try to use some under underwater guiding here to keep it up. And then it's just going to hopefully see that hole and go right through it. I will camouflage this area with a little bit of grass when I'm done. Uh, but for now, I do have to go back to the other side with some sticks to finish up the job. Oh man, <laughs> there's a blooper, as Greg would say. So we've got one camera here overlooking that set. That set was harder to set up. That set took me like a half an hour, 45 minutes. It's not my preferred set. Water's a little deep. And then we got, uh, we'll call this, a, it's not quite a dam break set. It's a near dam break set. So we've got the camera here. And then I'm going to break this dam up a little bit more. It's actually not too bad. And I don't have to do a lot. Here, actually, I'll just move this big log here. And that'll be enough to piss the crap out of that beaver. And I'll put some scent out too, just to, just to butter it up a little bit. Because um, there's no real reason for the beaver to come over on this side. So I've got this set here. It's set on a H bracket. And the H bracket, just you just push it down and then you put the trap right on it and it holds it it takes like three seconds to set up uh, but it will only really work on um, bottom you got to put it all the way down the bottom you can get long ones that will work down the bottom too they're just longer and then you can set it up so I may you may want to invest in those they're just really hard to move because they're so <laughs> they're so long like four feet long so you got to drag that through the woods um, so like I said there's no real reason for the beaver to come up here he's gonna come over here to work on the set he's gonna go through that trap first so I'd expect to have the beaver in that trap, uh, but this is going to be back up. If, if you know, if I trap one, maybe well, this there's probably two. There's maybe a male and a female. I'll get both. That'll be fine, and the babies can live. That's the idea. Turn things over, get rid of the adult beavers, and uh, so I'll put the put some scent up here just before I leave, and uh, that's that's plenty of break. They they that drives them not absolutely bananas. So uh, that's a pretty good deal. My feet are a little sloppy wet still. I'll take the bridge this time. I won't go through the water. Uh, and you guys might be curious why I picked to use a sled. You know, it's end of the season. There is some patches of snow left. The main reason for using the sled, it slides pretty good. I can't use anything with wheels. And obviously I'm in water, I'm in the swamp, and this is working really good to keep all the water out. So I would recommend a sled. Obviously it's not gonna work with like really thick brush, but it's a little four foot uh, Pelican made, I think. Good company, makes good sleds. If you guys can find those, recommend that. So anyway, that's the work done. Now we get to relax. You guys know it's spring here in Canada when everything is absolutely muddy. There's water everywhere, standing water. Now that we got those beaver traps set, we can think about uh, our power supply, which is Jackery. And uh, we can think about lunch. I got a surprise lunch today because, well, I don't figure I'm gonna be catching a beaver in the middle of broad daylight. So we'll get our food scratched out together. You guys know the cabin here. Oh boy, we can't see anything in here until we get our power supply set up. Bunch of different batteries from Jackery. You guys can check it out. I'll put a link down below. So it is a big unit with big output. Uh, what I like straight off about this is it has a nice portable feature. You can wheel it. I've got two 100 watt solar panels. They've got a nice feature that holds them up upright and they fold out and a good carrying option as well just one hand obviously they're zero emissions you can hook them up to straight up electricity you can do 100 percent eco-friendly no noise there's no emissions so this makes uh, car camping out off gridding a quiet experience we've got the regular standard ac 120 volts we got four of those we've got the uh, 120 volt 3000 watt pure sine wave technology You've got your uh, RV output as well. You've got your DC 12 volt. So that's your car charge right there. And then you've got uh, our car port, I should say. You got your USB-A, USB-C. It's gonna give us all of the output features and exactly what's going on. So we were at 97% charge. This thing sets up in one minute. Literally, I popped it out of the box. I opened up my cable bag, which is a nice convenient way to hold all of your cables which amounts to two pick your charge method you've got your your car charge or your regular all wall charge before we take it inside i do want to also highlight the fact that you can charge it obviously for free with the solar panels practically for life you get 2000 total charge charges with this unit 
What's amazing about this pack is you can use it up to minus 20 degrees Celsius. So let's take it inside and let's give it a trial run. We're going to try to use both of them at the same time. Standard items that you're gonna be using off gridding 1500 watts output right now these are two high 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 drain devices you've got a toaster and a hot plate so running 1500 watts in combination with the lights we're going to fire up the toaster and we're going to see this this is going to rip this is going to be an ultra ultra torture test again you would not use these same items at the same time we've got 2300 watts and this thing is delivering we got a little bit of smoke coming off the hot plate here We've got the toaster oven firing up. It's turning red on the inside, 2300 watts. It says right here on the right hand side that we can run this for 1.2 hours. So now that we've used some of the standard household appliances, let's get into some more heavy duty power tools that you might use for your off grid experience. Here comes the big guns. We've got the Sawzall and the ever popular electric chainsaw. There we got lights, we've got camera, we've got action. So I assume I just plug it in here. Oh my gosh. Oh, well there's no match. It gets, it peaks out about 1300. These are gonna be comparable to anything you use like a sander or uh, a drill or anything like that. A uh, skill saw, what have you. At full rip, that's 600 watts. So technically you could use the chainsaw and the sawzall at the same time with a combined unit of about 2200 watts. I'm getting a nice comfortable 150 watt input from the solar, but you can get up to 200 watts. This Jackery is the ultimate power master for outdoors and blackouts with 3000 watts. Ultra charge time at 2.4 hours via AC and three to four hours via DC. Quiet charging mode means it only operates at 30 decibels and it's got a great portable suitcase design. You've also got the smart app control monitor which controls via the app and always safety first with 30% improved heat dissipation which makes the battery work a lot better for you guys. This is a brand new product by Jackery, the 3000 Pro. So check the links down in the description below to grab your version of the Jackery. They have all different kinds. If you're looking for this one, I would highly recommend it. So again, check those links down in the description below. Jackery is a good sponsor to my channel. They help me make content for you guys. So go support them. All right, guys, now that we've got our uh, battery all set up, I am getting hungry and there's no freaking way I'm gonna be waiting all night long to get any kind of food in my stomach, especially when it comes to beavers. You can't, you just can't count on, on beaver meat. You can't count on beaver for sustenance. You have to uh, be more, a lot more active when it comes to uh, getting food. And thankfully I did a hunt last fall that was successful for bear. And I ate a little bit then and I've been eating as part of my diet. I've gone like keto, keto extreme, not just keto friendly, but keto extreme as part of trying to get rid of some of my bloating. So I did a week and a half of just proteins and fats, uh, kind of like a wilderness living challenge, except from home. So I'm going a lot more keto. Um, I, it could be a bacteria overgrowth that I have. And uh, I don't know exactly what it is but uh, it's becoming uncomfortable to have just that much gas in my in my stomach in my in my bowels in my intestines so that's what i've been doing anyway so eating a lot more meat and uh, cleaning out the freezer look at that guys there's even a little bit of snow left in the forest so going to be a little bit more nostalgic today i've got some special fire lighting material um, my dad wasn't much of an outdoorsman he he was a little bit of an outdoorsman I think he introduced introduced us to camping he was definitely a fisherman uh, but he wasn't much of a hunter he didn't trap or anything like that that's really 
you know, more on my mom's side. And so my mom, I don't know if you guys know, but she was, uh, she was given up for adoption. And so she never really knew her biological family until much later in life. And so we didn't really grow up on my mom's side with my biological side, which happens to be um, trappers, hunters, and uh, fishermen. So obviously some on my dad's side as well. Uh, my grandfather was much more of a hunter than my dad was. Um, so sometimes you just, you either you get the bug or you don't. So anyway, the point is I'm gonna start the fire with something that my dad taught me. <laughs> All right, well that fire is pretty happy. We gotta let it burn down. I did make a nice uh, long pole. It's a paint, old paint pole that doesn't work as a paint pole anymore. And I put the GoPro at the end of the pole and we can dunk it in the water and see what we see. I've been anticipating this moment. I think you guys have as well because you guys wanna see what this pond looks like underwater because we did so much amending to this pond. It was absolutely ridiculous. We put tens of thousands of rocks into this pond. Now you should go back and check the series out uh, because it's a doozy. Man, we did lots of work. The color of the pond you see is a beautiful emerald green. It's almost like a spring fed pond. And I'll run the camera around the outskirts of the pond just to see what it looks like. I want to note though, there's a lot of, well not a lot of people, a couple of people had mentioned they didn't, they weren't too keen on the grain bin. Do you see the grain bin down there? Because I do not see the freaking grain bin. So we sunk a grain bin down in the middle. Again, check out the video if you want to figure out how we did it. And then we lined the entire thing with geotextile and we put rocks all around it. You see how high the water is? My goal for this year for the trout pond was to actually be able to uh, bow fish or spear fish the pond, like go down and snorkel, spear fish the pond or bowfish from the surface, which means I should at least be able to see the fish. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but that's pretty clear. Like I will be able to see fish down, I would say about five or six feet, no issues at all whatsoever. And then beyond that, I won't be able to see. But if I snorkel down and I have five feet of visibility, then I should be able to snorkel fish them. All right, let's get this camera down there and uh, let's see what it looks like. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, I hope you guys got to see a little bit there. Uh, I can't see the grain bin from the top, and I don't know if you guys would have saw it with the GoPro, so I do have the kayak here. I'm gonna load up the kayak and the aqua view, and I'm gonna dunk that down and see what it looks like down at the very, very bottom. That's the only way I can tell immediately, unless you guys already saw. Well, I think we need a dock here, guys. What do you guys think? We need a dock. Some kind of floating dock here. Would be ideal. Just makes fishing a lot easier. It's a lot easier getting in and out. Uh, sure gives you a perspective on how full the pond is because it's like right up to the rim here. <laughs> it's like almost overflowing. But that's all water table. That's all just from how high the water up is underground. So if you dug a hole anywhere around here, you would hit water pretty soon, pretty quick. So we got that one aerator here. I'm not gonna move it today, but I wanna move it under the uh, fish jam, the log jam, the trout jam. And the other one will stay where it is and in it's inside the grain bin down there. You can see, as soon as the sun comes out, this aerator goes, although it uh, looks like it's behind a tree right now. And of course the other one fires up every once in a while as well. I'll drop this uh, aqua view down. This gives me a live feed. Whereas the GoPro, I can't tell anything. I have to review it after. So you guys get immediate feedback, but I certainly don't. I should be in the grain bin now or very close to the grain bin. And then as far as like getting crystal clear, we're not gonna get crystal clear because, well, if there's nothing to see down there, then holy smokes, it's deep. You guys can check the other videos. Oh, there's the bottom. There's the edge of the grain bin. Wow, so it is crystal, like you can see right to the bottom. Uh-oh, we're going to smash into the grain bin. Oh, no, we're coming up. We're coming up the grain bin, bouncing up the grain bin. I can see where we are. We're just on the edge here. So it looks like we are still up against the grain bin. So we can come up a little bit here to pop out. And we should, see we're still in the grain bin there. Still in the grain bin. There, we popped out of the grain bin. Oh, we might be get good timing here. Oh, look how awesome that looks down there. That's amazing. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm snagged. Okay, I'm good. Oh man, that's impressive. So the trout jam, I can't see. You know, if I can't see it, these trout that we put in here soon are gonna absolutely love it. So we're trolling here now. We should be over the trout jam soon. See the trout jam? That's a trout jam, we're gonna go over top of it. Oh, we're bouncing off the trout jam now. And we're over, the, we went through the aerator. There's the trout jam there. Oh man, look how natural that looks already. That's sweet. Look at that. Now if I can steady the camera here, we might be able to, oh, there, we're under the trout jam. I wanna turn it the other way to get a perspective. We're under it. Oh, look at that. Look how sweet that looks. That looks freaking amazing. That is so awesome. <gasps> look at that. Look how it's blocking the sun and everything. Nice shady spot, nice and deep. Oh man, that's mint. You can see one of the edges sloughed off a little bit. Just the one side. I thought, I figured that side would slough off actually because it's so steep there. Back up a touch. <gasps> look at that guys. Oh, that turned out so perfect. So perfect. Hey, we better get out before we get snagged. That is amazing. Oh, we just went through some bubbles. The aerator. We might be going on the other side of the trout jam. We're on top of the trout jam. And we should be bouncing off the back end of it. There's the back end of it. And we're in a crevasse. The Condor Air windmill just fired up. Look at that. And there it shoots up the bubbles. Look at that. Look how fine those bubbles are. That's pretty amazing. There's the bubbles. There's the bubbles. There's the bubbles. And we got them. Look at that. Look how sweet that looks. Look at those bubbles coming up. That's pretty sweet. Look how fine tuned those bubbles are. That's neat. I wonder if I can get all the way down to the bottom. I'm moving, but I might be able to get there. Well, there's the hose for the aerator. 
bottom looks really clear i can see the hose all the way across that's pretty sweet now if it'll blow look how clear it is down there boys that's a buttes lots of hose down there we can probably remove remove you can see the whole bottom it's not silting up too too bad sweet beached them all right well that's pretty good oh that fire is nicely burned down to coals i'm glad we were patient about that got all the other things done first as we should my mouth is watering for the bear steaks but they're going to be a while here we go I'll give you guys a look there how does that look does that look delicious Limited edition Wodobo. It's got the it's maple flavor, which is fitting because we are spring and we actually just finished up our last run of the spring maple syrup. So there we go. We're just going to let that cook as slowly as we humanly can on a fire. Slow and steady. Just sit in that grease and let it cook. Like I said, for as long as we can. We want it to be nice and tender deep fried bear meat yummy all right let's give it some time just hit the button on the uh, jackery and it's still at 97 percent or 95 percent so it's gone down 2% just running it, running the lights all day. That's pretty sweet. And I say life doesn't really get much better than this, man. Jackery's working good, so happy for the sponsorship. I got bear meat sizzling on the fire that I harvested myself last fall. And I've also got two chances at getting some beaver for food tomorrow morning, which is pretty darn sweet. I'm, I'm high hopes for that. That beaver's been around for a long time making a mess, cutting down trees. And like I said, I couldn't get to it in the winter because, well, what happened is it froze solid and then the beaver didn't come downstream. It wanted to stay up on the upper stretches and that creek freezes solid. So it protects a, a spot upstream where it has a little bit more, more, more water to hide in for the winter. So I didn't get to it. I tried to, I just couldn't get to it. go you guys see that or is that too shaded a little bit shaded now it's a little bit not shaded here we go so I was very patient on this letting it cook for probably a lot longer than it normally would but I found this bear is a little chewy I've had bear before that's not super chewy I'm gonna turn my hat backwards it is pretty shaded here well, there's a chunk of the bear meat Ah, cooked over the fire. You can definitely taste that it's bear. It has a distinct flavor. Like maybe it's a cross between venison, beaver, roast beefy flavor. And the fat in it is particularly good. That's good. Just what the doctor ordered. Low, low FODMAP. I keep saying food map, but it's FODMAP. So you're not supposed to eat any carbs or anything that can ferment in your gut. This won't be fermenting in my gut. Very, very good. Hmm. Beautiful. Well, guys, I think I figured out why this cabin smells a little funky. What do you guys think that is? It looks like some kind of nest. Now, you might think it's like a bird nest, but because it's on the ground here tucked in this blanket I'm gonna guess it's probably a rodent nest and more specifically I'm gonna guess it's a red squirrel uh, it could be a mouse but it looks awfully big for a mouse also it's filled with uh, cedar shavings 
like cedar bark. Cedar bark's pretty fine stuff. So I can't imagine a mouse would climb up a tree and then shred all of this and bring it down and then put it, make it a nest up up above the ground in a, like a really weird spot. Uh, squirrels climb trees, squirrels climb cedar trees. It would take them a long time to collect all that, but that's super interesting. And incidentally, this makes a really great fire starter. And I'd be tempted to burn this all at the same time, but I think I'll probably pick out some of the uh, bedding here. It looks like some styrofoam and stuff. We'll throw that in the trash. And the rest of it we can use to make like a friction fire at a later date. Because this is like, this is hard work to shred all this stuff. I've shredded it before from this material and it's lots and lots and lots of work. So too bad for the squirrel can't live in here anymore. And maybe we'll get rid of some of the stink. Oh, there's anything you guys really need to have around camp is a good set of gloves. Pick these up at my favorite store, one of my favorite stores anyway. Princess Auto lets me handle the firewood. The uh, fish will be coming to the pond soon enough. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get them in this week. I tried to get things organized, but uh, things didn't work out with um, Clark at Linden Fish Hatcheries, Trout Hatcheries. He uh, actually had a little bit of a story. His uh, One of his silos i guess are the buildings that house the fish the aquaculture part of the business well the, the the snow load actually made the building collapse which had sent him back quite a bit so he's uh he's having to deal with that so we've pushed our our stocking for our pond back a, a week or so but uh we're gonna get a good a good number of them we're thinking around a hundred to 150 and i might probably put some into the old pond you guys know the I had a pond before we redid this pond because i wasn't really sure if this pond was going to work all that good so probably put uh you know 25 fish or so in that one and then we'll have up to 125 in this pond i don't know if we should put that many in there we'll be able to do 100 here and then 50 at the other pond something like that uh, but once we get them put in there we'll have a good idea of what that looks like but uh, i've got something really cool in mind for a, uh, a little bit of a gag, a little bit of a fun thing that we can do. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. It should be coming up shortly. Maybe the next video you guys see. Eighty-three percent of juice left and uh just got a little bit of silent start up there the fan making sure it's running so it looks like we're in good shape
Well, looks like that door's catching. I have to get uh, Kevin on that. So we're expanding, but it's gotten so warm so fast that maybe I'll get it closed enough. Mosquitoes won't get in, but uh, not so secure that a raccoon can't push its way in here. It's nice and cozy in here, no fire necessary. Sun, uh, sun's just going down now. I'm gonna probably chill out. I am not planning on doing a whole lot of stuff. There's not a lot going on this evening. I uh, brought a book to read, so I'll sit down and and do that. But this, the idea about this whole trip was just basically to clear my mind, to get back out doing things, not have a big defined schedule. Yeah, I'm I'm planning on really just taking it easy, get back into things. It's a little bit easier for me to film at the log cabin than it is to do big survival challenges when I'm looking for food that I have to get food so I could bring whatever I wanted here, which is really nice. And uh, just having like some pre-prepared firewood and a cozy bed to sleep in and the power supplied by Jackery just makes things so much easier. Um, you know, not hand to mouth. So that was it. That was the whole plan of this. And also I needed to take care of the beavers. So that's really goals that I have set for this whole week. So I hope you guys stick around. I'll share little bits and pieces as, uh, as I find something interesting to share.